I am a perfectionist that doesn't know how to do things perfectly. In three, get two, one, pack the toes. Every single thing that I touch, I make worse. I do not enjoy buying books anymore. It's like a burden to me. These three are the options, I think. So that's Earth, Live, Neutral, Sick. Just before we get into this week's vlog, I would like to bring you guys a little message and also a giveaway from the sponsor of today's video, which is Balesa Boutique. You heard right, guys. I have once again teamed up with my friends over at Balesa to bring you guys a giveaway where you can win gift cards and also free sex toys. Everybody is a winner as well, so you have absolutely nothing to lose by entering. So if you guys don't know who Balesa are, they are a buy woman company that are dedicated to empowering people to explore, embrace, and celebrate their sexuality. And they do, of course, make really cute sex toys. So I currently own four of Balesa's toys. I really love how they're all ergonomically designed to fit perfectly into your hand. And they all have easy to reach controls while they're in use. They all also come in discrete charging cases that double as the USB charging stations. So if you're traveling, absolutely nobody is gonna know what it is that you have in your bag, except maybe airport security. <laughs> the two most recent Recent additions to my Balesa toy collection are the Demi Wand and the Thump. The Demi Wand from Balesa is a toy that works for all body types with an innovative design. It's whisper quiet, has a flexible neck, and is 100% waterproof, giving maximum versatility. And the Thump is a toy that truly provides all of the external clit stimulation that you could ever need, with suction, thumping, and standard vibrations, meaning that this little toy truly does do it all. My favorite toy, though, is the Pebble. The suction function on this is the first toy that I have ever owned with this function. And let me tell you, I do indeed love it. So if you guys think that Balesa is a brand that you can vibe with, pun very much intended, then you can head down to the link in my description box for your chance to win a gift card to spend at Balesa Boutique or a sex toy of your very own. And remember, everyone is a winner in this giveaway, so you truly don't really have anything to lose. A big thank you to Balesa for sponsoring this one. Good morning, my guys. I hope Hope you guys have had a really good week and I also hope that I have a really good week because if you saw last week's vlog you will know that I was really going through it like I was not having the best time last week and I did say it at the end of last week's vlog but like sometimes you just have to limp your way to Monday to have a little bit of a fresh start and I feel like that's definitely what happened with me last week going into this week and I'm determined to have a better time in the coming days. So in terms of what I'm currently reading, I am participating in Realmathon, go team time. I don't know if we're winning, but I hope we are. I haven't had a win. This is my, I think, third time hosting Realmathon. I think I'm due one. Whether Team Shadows, Blood and Creation agree, I guess we'll see. But last week I was also reading books that I kind of had to read, book club books, obligations. And this week I'm reading things that are still on my TBR, but ones that I'm more excited to read. And I do think that that is definitely going to help with the, I did still read a decent amount last week, but I feel like I'm going to end up reading a little bit more this week. So I'll start with what I'm currently reading because I do still have an obligation that carried over from last week and that is Shadowlands by Stacey Marie Brown. So this one is the final book in the Savage Land series which is my Patreon book club series. We are going to be starting a new one in May. We're currently in the process of selecting it and I'm very excited because while I had a good time in the initial installments of this series it is very samey, very repetitive and I'm kind of ready for this to be over. This one is, I'm gonna go through my spiel again hopefully Hopefully for the penultimate time because I will have to do it once more in my wrap up. But this one, if y'all are unaware, is about the Ward of the King of the human realm. And in this world, the realms of the Fae and the human have been separated after the veil between the two worlds fell and there was a war between the Fae and the humans. So now humans live on one side of the city, Fae live on the other. And our main character is the Ward of the Human King. And from her position of privilege, she steals drugs from the trains that transport them through the city to put the drugs on the black market so that the poorer people of society can benefit from the profits instead of it lying in the pockets of the elite, which doesn't make sense to me, but that's what she does, okay? And one day when she's doing this, she is caught at the checkpoint between the realms of the human and the fae, and she's sent to a maximum security prison where she meets the dark and alluring half fae warrior, Warwick Farkas. So I'm currently 218 pages into this one. It is a bit a little bit longer and I feel like that's why I've been dragging my feet on it. Also the 
but starts to these books are not the most compelling. The good thing about these books is that they are really addictive and read really quickly, but I find you have to like get a little chunk of the way through before that really starts to kick in. So starting it last week was rough. It was also kind of like the book that was my least priority from last week. So I was just chipping away at it a little bit, but it's just under 600 pages. It's 577. And I'm hoping that if I read like 50-ish pages a day. I should be done with it by the end of the week and finally done with this series. It's an accomplishment as well because I'll be finishing a six book series. Aside from that, I do have an audio book on the go that I'm listening to casually. I, I'm gonna be doing some work in the bedroom. If you watched last week's vlog, you will know that what we did last week did not go so well. We had a bit of a glossing disaster and I'm just so excited for the painting process to be over in there. We need to do a second coat on the gloss, which I don't wanna use frog tape for after yesterday's disaster, but I don't really know how to go about it without so we'll see how I manage to make that work. Um, I'm honestly having nightmares about that bedroom at this point. Pharaoh and Bill Ball Estate Emulsion. Gorgeous, beautiful, stunning finish, but it is a finicky paint and I am a perfectionist that doesn't know how to do things perfectly. So normally I let things slide a little bit, but this finish demands perfection and it's testing me. But I will be listening to an audiobook when I'm doing that stuff, when I'm walking Bree throughout the week. And I'm currently listening to Path of Daggers by Robert Jordan, which is book eight in the Wheel of Time series. This one, as you all know, is a classic adult high fantasy struggle between light and dark, where we are following the Dragon Reborn, who is the one person who has the ability to alter the events of the ages, as he assumedly tries to tip the world towards light for good because in the past ages the dark has been winning. You all know my journey with this series has been up and down. I'm like 90 pages into this one and so far it's fine. It's a shorter one, it's 600 pages. Um, the last one was not necessarily my least favourite but definitely had some questionable content which I know there's been some discussion in my comments about what Robert Jordan was trying to do with that. I'm still unsure how I feel about it. But I know that I'm like solidly entering the slog era of Wheel of Time. So I'm kind of just prepared to chip away at it a little bit and see where we end up with that. And then there is one book that I'm starting today, which is a buddy read that I'm doing with Beth. If y'all don't know Beth, Beth is one of my friends. She is on mainly on Bookstagram. She's done Patreon sprints with me and stuff in the past. So you may have seen her around her Bookstagram. I'll leave it down below. It's fairy tale reads. But we are going to be buddy reading the Poison Study series by Maria V. Snyder over the coming month. And I am so excited. I am going to be starting this one today. This one is a, I don't think it's technically classed as a fantasy romance but I do believe that it has a strong romantic plot especially in the first book but I think I'm really gonna love this because this is like old school fantasy romance where we have a very dominant fantasy plot but also a very compelling romance. I'm so excited. I've heard so many good things about this book in particular. I know some people think that the series goes downhill after book one but I'm very much along for the ride for this. I hope that I love it and this is an extended universe as well. I think there's nine books in this series so far that's broken down into three trilogies and I'm I'm so excited to get into it. This has been on my TBR forever. As you can tell, this is a very old paperback that I picked up secondhand a while ago and like it's yellowing, she's crusty, she's dusty. But this one is about a girl who I believe is to be executed and she is saved from that, I guess, and taken to be, is it the commander general? Yeah, the commander of Ixia's food taster. So she then starts to study and learn about poisons so that she can identify them if she encounters them in the commander's food. And I do believe that there is a romantic plot in here between her and I think the captain of the commander's guard. Is he called Valak? I feel like he's some sort of like official guard type person. So I'm super excited to get into that one. That one I'm gonna be reading 100 pages a day. And hopefully if I have any reading time after that, I'll be chipping away at this, listening to Path of Daggers when I have stuff going on. And I am hoping to read something else in this vlog as well, but we'll obviously see how it goes. So I am gonna go get on with my day. I'm going to Asda to do the weekly shop. Love to do it on a Monday mid-morning because there's nobody there, it's beautiful. And then after that, I'm going to finish editing last week's vlog, get that all scheduled, and that is all I've got on for today. It's a nice easy one, which is great because I'm trying to, I am trying to get my shit together in terms of being a little bit more productive this week because I felt like I just really wasn't last week, but I'm kind of easing myself into it. I think there's a night
So I am home from my outing. We ended up going to Morrison's instead of Asda because the main reason we wanted to go to Asda in the first place is because tomorrow I'm going to be doing sprints for Realmathon a little bit later than I normally do because I have an appointment really annoyingly right in the middle of the day. So for like an easy dinner, a quick dinner, we were gonna get a pizza from the pizza counter. And we remembered that actually the Morrison's ones are a lot nicer than the Asda ones. So we went there instead, which means that I also went to the library because as I discussed with you guys this morning, I do not have a copy of The Path of Daggers. Now, up until this point, I have been buying my Wheel of Time books and I still don't necessarily mind doing that because I am reading them for the book club. They are all getting read. But I did realize actually, I think it was when I was reading book seven that I'm listening to these on audiobook. So I am using Audible credits to listen to them. And I think I kind of forget because it's a credit system, like you pay for a credit. I forget that I'm actually paying. It's not like Scribd or Kindle Unlimited where it's a subscription, you get like unlimited use or like you get to use your monthly payment amount on more than one thing. With Audible, like I'm literally paying for one credit to spend on one book. And that means that I'm paying, if I'm buying the paperback of these from Waterstones, which are 10.99, and I'm using an Audible credit, I am paying 19 pounds per book for the books in this series. And I don't like it enough to pay 19 pounds per book, you know? Like my ratings for this series have ranged between two and four stars with four being like the exception. So I think for now, I'm going to get the books from the library and listen because I do like to have a physical copy to kind of read along if I need to like if it gets a little bit dense but also to mark my page and then just carry on listening to the audiobooks because I definitely can't read these just physically they're too slow for me like it takes me a long long time if I'm reading them physically without audio. I was talking to Sandra about this last night actually. For series like this I don't know what I'm gonna do because I've spent so much time invested in a read along of this series. I want to own the books to represent that. But realistically, like if this was another series and I'd given all of the books pretty much like an average of three stars, I would definitely unhaul it. So I don't know what I'm gonna do in the long run. I might eventually like invest in the box sets where you get like five books for 35 pounds or something like that instead of buying them individually. But for now, we're going the library route. I did go to two libraries today as well. I went to one in my town and the one that's near Morrison's. They're all part of like a, a county library system so I get to access all of them. But the one that was near Morrison's is where I got this one from. And I also picked up a cookbook because I want to own cookbooks. As y'all know, I do a lot of cooking. I have HelloFresh, which I use like for five days out of the week. And then the two days that we don't have HelloFresh, unless we need a quick meal like we do tomorrow when we get pizza, like I do, I normally cook like Instagram recipes. I also do a lot of baking. And so I want to own cookbooks, but I feel that a lot of cookbooks can be really inaccessible. They can use ingredients that are really hard to find or like you'll need to buy a full pack of something that you would never normally use to use a tiny bit in this one recipe or they use like complicated equipment or the instructions aren't super clear. So I don't really know where to start with cookbooks because I think it's very tailored to the individual person, their cooking skill and what they like want to make. And I wouldn't know if a cookbook is for me unless I like went into Waterstones, took a bunch off the shelf, read them and then try to figure out like if I could make them if it's something that I wanted. So I've decided that I'm going to check out a couple from the library. I have just picked up one today which is From Mother to Mother by Lisa Faulkner. The reason why I wanted this one is because I really like the meals that I grew up with. So things like cottage pie and lobbies and stews and things that like I really associate with home cooking. Now flicking through this it isn't necessarily things like that but there are lots of like one pot recipes. There's like roasts in here. I'm actually really interested in the cake section. There's Irish chocolate muffins. There is also a strawberry and coconut cake which looks really good. A marble cake with orange drizzle syrup. So I feel like even though I got this for the meals not knowing it had a dessert section it might be the dessert section that I end up testing out before I take it back. And if I enjoy any particular recipes other than chocolate and coconut tart as well then I'll note them down because I actually want to make a recipe binder. Almost that's like a, a small one so that I can have sections for type like this type of recipe and be able to clip in sheets of paper instead of having it in a notebook where like I can't rearrange the pages if I want to. So that is something that I do want to get on with because it's really hard for me like when I want to make something in particular to go and find the specific recipe online that I haven't like made a note of or anything. And I definitely, definitely need to do that at some point. And then the last book that I picked up from the library is actually my Patreon pick for March and I'm planning on reading this next 
next week but I thought that I would go get it out because next week as well as the start of the Easter holidays and I don't want to be going to places like the library when the kids are, are all running free. So I went and got this now but this one is The Nowhere Child by Christian White. So this one is a thriller and it is about a woman that lives in Australia and somebody approaches her and tells her that she is a child that went missing like 20, 30 years ago in the US. So I believe that this is following the past and the present because it's following this woman who she tries to find out how she was abducted when the person that raised her seemed like a perfectly normal person and I think it's also following the family in the aftermath of this child going missing. I love me a thriller. I don't read them often because I don't want to get so used to them that I understand like the conventions of the genre but I am really really excited to read this so I'm glad that I picked this up. This is on Everand which is formerly Scribd but I have realised actually I don't love reading ebooks. I It's not that I love the sanctity of reading a physical book it's just I really struggle with the physical like I struggle to want to pick up my iPad or my Kindle if I'm not traveling. If I'm at home I want to read a physical book and I will almost avoid reading if I have to pick up like a device to read on it. So I picked up that while I knew that it was at my library. So there we have a little library haul. It's really hard because I obviously spent a lot of time looking around my library especially at the non-fiction sections because I'm looking for a couple of non-fiction books that I want to listen to the audios of but like I said I like to have a physical copy to mark my page in and they have so many good books that I'm interested in in my library at the minute but I don't don't want to keep going to the library and getting out books when I have so many books here that I need to read. I do eventually want to utilize my library a little bit more and use it for like things like this as well like before I get to that point but right now I really need to work on cutting down my own library until I'm at a place and then obviously going forward instead of buying books like Wheel of Time I will get them from the library but something that I actually keep wanting to talk about in my shelve it or scrap it series that I keep forgetting is how much I do not enjoy buying books anymore it's like a burden to me because when they arrive I have to figure out where to put them so actually going to my library is much more enjoyable than buying books to me right now which is sad because like it's something that I really love but just knowing that I'm gonna have the problem of shelving the books when I bring them home is really stopping me like we're two and a half months into the year at this point and you all know when I do my hauls I don't include my monthly subscription box books I only include special editions that I've bought from subscription boxes and anything that I've like picked up elsewhere and I know that I have a couple of boxes that I need to open with special editions that I have bought in but at the minute in my haul pile I only have 10 books that I've intentionally bought this year and two of those are editions of Empire of the Damned so the same book and Two of them are House of Flame of Shadow in different editions as well. And then I have like the new fairy loot copies of Red Rising as well, which once again are duplicates of books that I already own in a special edition. So I'm truly not purchasing very much at the minute, which is great because it aligns with my goals, but it also feels weird because I do or have previously enjoyed buying and collecting books. And it's interesting how now that they're just spilling out of everywhere, it's becoming an issue. I do have though this here, all this, is my unhaul pile. Some of these I need to film because I haven't told you guys I'm unhauling them yet, but because I've done my like finished the Goldsboro series at the end of last year and because I've also just done my recap, my revisit of last year's self-destructing books, as well as the books that I'm generally unhauling and doing shelf and scrap it, I have a big big stack of books that need to go and I want to sell some of them I want to donate some of them and I do actually need to dedicate time to like listing them on my website the ones that I'm selling so that I can start to clear through them because they are taking up a lot of space and they're stressing me out right now I think somewhere in a different life I'm still saying it's okay. we just gotta leave it but then he's all the so than happy I feel I am 100% going to be bringing you a reading update today because I'm already 100 or over 100 pages into Poison Study and I'm enjoying it, which is always great. So I'll be telling you a little bit more about that later, but the main thing that I'm doing today is I have Realmathon sprints that are kicking off at 2 p.m. And I did mention that the reason for that is because I have an appointment today and that is for my laser hair removal. Now I spoke to you guys when I started my laser hair removal and told you that I would kind of like update you at regular 
increments as to how that is getting on. So I'm about to go shave. Every time you have a laser hair removal appointment, you have to shave the area that's being treated because otherwise the lasers kind of crisp the hair, like burn it, which is fine. It doesn't damage you in any way, but you can smell burning hair <laughs> during your appointment. So I am about to go shave that off, but this will be my fifth appointment. I have not shaved at all since my last appointment, which I think I'm having them every five weeks in the minute. So I have five weeks of hair growth on all of this area of my face. And I'm gonna get real close in a minute so that you guys can kind of see what's going on there. Um, I am breaking out, so please <laughs> excuse me. And ignore my eyebrows. My eyebrow wax is on Thursday. I know I'm growing a little bit of a mono brow, but we're trying to leave it longer in between my waxes so that I get like a better result. That will be cleared up on Thursday. But if I move in this, is where it's the thickest and as you can see it is not thick at all like even though it is slightly there i am very comfortable leaving this on my face for filming we have nothing on the peach fuzz that is completely smooth we have none of the thick chin hairs growing in here and the peach fuzz i think is the most remarkable because she did say she wasn't sure how successful it was going to be on that area of my face because it's a, like a much finer hair and then the upper lip is disappearing slowly and i am so thrilled with the results i will put up like a two to three day hair growth picture from before i started my treatment so you can truly see the difference between what the hair growth is like now compared to what it used to be but like I used to shave my face I had it waxed for a while but I was really struggling with the length of the time between waxing because it grows back so quickly and when I wasn't having it waxed I was shaving it every other day <laughs> so it was it was fast and then my chin hairs as well were coming in kind of thick around here and I'm just so so happy with the treatment it isn't cheap for sure like laser hair removal is not cheap but it is so worth it for someone like me that has like quite a large contrast between the color of my skin and the color of my hair and also the thickness of my hair as well as it was coming out if y'all are thinking about this if you have similar problems to me I can't say 100% if it is gonna work on you because it is like a very individual basis, like how well it works and how quickly it works. But I would definitely recommend giving it a go while looking into it because it has worked so well for me so far. So I'm gonna go shave my face so that I'm ready for my appointment, which is in an hour and a half. And I've done everything that I needed to do today aside from proof to my vlog, which I'm gonna do, I think in the first sprint this afternoon. But I have sent my Patreon bookmarks off to print, which I'm so excited about because because that is honestly just like such a weight off. I was so behind and really feeling the pressure trying to get that February one done and I've sent the March one off with it as well. So I'm now all caught up on that. I've just announced my Inner Circle and Cardery Patreon 24 hour readathon for the last weekend of the month and then I've made the thumbnail for the vlog and all I have to do now is proof it. I do technically have time to do it now because I've got 90 minutes until my appointment but I found a recipe on Instagram last night. I will put it in the description box for like protein flapjacks essentially it's like breakfast oat bars which is it's essentially a flapjack but with some healthy swaps to make it like lower calorie higher protein so i actually realized that i had everything in my cupboard to make them apart from biscoff biscuits there are they biscoff and white chocolate flavor so curtis actually went out today because we needed something from tesco and he picked up the biscuits as well so now i have everything that i need and i'm gonna make them it's literally just mixing everything together throwing it in a tray and sprinkling some stuff on top so I don't think it's going to take me very long but I'm excited because I've been wanting to bake for quite some time I haven't baked in a while I really want to make a carrot cake cheesecake but all of my free time when I have a free day has been spent like painting the bedroom so I haven't really had time to take time out and do some baking recently so I'm very excited to squeeze in this like quick 30 minute project <laughs> in the middle of the day <laughs> Good. Very good. 
So I want absolutely nothing more than to get a scolding hot shower right now and especially wash my hair but my plan for today is to do some more glossing in the bedroom which is filling me with anxiety because last time if you didn't catch the end of last week's vlog it was an absolute disaster and I think I might have found a solution to like not having to use tape which I'll talk you guys through like what my plan for the day is when I get up there but I wanted to check in with you one because I'm procrastinating on getting changed and going upstairs but the other reason is because I did promise you a reading update on poison study which I'm now 218 pages into and thoroughly enjoying so at this point I still don't know what the point of the series is so my synopsis is not going to be great at this point I feel hopefully I'll get there eventually but this one is about a girl called Yelena I, Yelena sounds really clumsy but she's called Yel Yel Blah. she's called Yelena and she is she's been in prison for up to a year you think she's around 18 19 years old and she was arrested and sentenced to execution for murdering the son of her almost adoptive father this world is split into i think eight sectors it's interesting because it is a high fantasy but it feels almost dystopian because the history of the world is that there was royalty there was magic and this guy 15 years ago called the commander overthrew the royalty and he's kind of removed everything that he finds frivolous so like art has been like destroyed and ripped off the walls taken over the seat of like the royal family and he now rules this country that he split off into sectors with a general rule in each sector and I still don't know how I feel about him because I don't feel like I agree with his destruction of all of the art and the beauty and all of that kind of thing but he actually seems to have done it for genuine reasons so I'm interested to see how that plays out in the series because I feel like these types of people in books we typically can't trust but I'm not sure which way he's gonna go especially because the male main character Valak in this book is very close to the commander and maybe he dies maybe that's going to be the issue we'll see but our main character Yelena killed the son of the general of the sector that she lived in so she was sent to the main sector where the commander is to wait her to await her execution however since this system has been rebuilt like they follow their rules to the letter the rules state that when the food taster for the commander dies the next person to be executed will be offered that role and the chance to work as a food taster testing for poisons instead of being executed. So Yelena is offered this and she obviously accepts. So she is being trained under Valak who is an assassin but also the commander's advisor and he he's kind of like trained in martial arts as well but he's predominantly a scholar he reminds me a lot of like warden from the bone season series if you've read that one of my favorite series would recommend he starts to teach her about poisons so that she can identify or like learn how to taste for poisons instead of just like eating food and seeing if she dies so that is kind of the setup for this story and then after Yelena accepts this position it causes some friction amongst not amongst all of the generals of this world but the one who's son she murdered feels wronged because he wanted to see her killed for her crime so he's like constantly like trying to get to her putting in complaints trying to have her executed but everybody's like really keen on following the law and the law states that she should be the food tester so even though they understand why this guy wants her dead they're also not willing to let it happen so a lot of this book is kind of like her evading this guy but she is essentially trying to survive as he like makes attempts on her life and even as she's constantly like scared of him making an attempt on her life I do suspect foul play amongst the government as well I feel like we definitely have to shift the equilibrium at some point in this book like I said I don't really know a full picture of the series at this point so I'm not sure where it's going but we have established that our main character does have magic the overhaul of the political system in this world happened 15 years ago so our main character was very young when it happened and because of that she actually doesn't know very much about magic wielders 
which means that we don't know very much about magic wielders because we are reading through her perspective. So we know that the commander doesn't like magic, we know that he has killed, like when he overhauled the system, he killed a lot of people who had magic, and we also don't know how people manifest magic, how that kind of thing is cultivated and trained, because all of that knowledge has kind of been lost. Now we are in the northern area of the world in this book. It has been established that there is also a southern kingdom that used to trade with the north but has now been like kind of excommunicated and it's forbidden for people to trade with them or interact with them because they kind of believe in the old ways that the commander has outlawed and that includes magic. So we know there's magic in the south, we know that our main character has some sort of magical ability, but we have no idea like what kind of magical abilities are prevalent in this world and how the magic system exactly works at this point. So I definitely expect that to play a role in the later books in this series, but like I said I'm really torn and I don't know what direction this series is going in, because while I don't agree with the commander like killing the royalty, exiling and killing the magicians, overhauling the system, destroying the art and the history, he seems okay and the reasons that were given for him doing it and the systems that are in place now seem okay so I don't really know whether he's going to end up he has to end up being a villain or dead like I don't feel like there's another option just because of how these things go but I'm very torn at the minute because things that normally would play a big role like an evil commander don't seem to be the case so I don't know where the story's going, but I'm having a really good time with it. The writing is a little bit more simplistic than I kind of expected from this. Not entirely sure what it was that I did expect, but once I sunk into it, like I feel like it gets stronger as the book goes on. I know, or I'm pretty sure there is going to be a romantic plot here. I'm assuming it's between the main character and Valak because they are the main characters that we've established in this book. Once again, that's typically how these things go. At the minute, I'm lukewarm about Valak. I like him, but I'm not like, like feeling any other kind of way like I'm not feeling any strong feelings towards him but hopefully if a romance does develop that will also come with time. This was written in like I think 2005 it says it was published and I feel like it does very much feel like 2005 and like YA adult crossover kind of fantasy of that period and I'm really enjoying it because of that like I was exactly right on thinking that this would be a series that I really enjoy obviously. I'm only halfway through the book so everything could change and I know that the general regard for this series is that people like each installment a little bit less so there is that to think of as well but with this first installment so far so good. I'm buddy reading this we're reading 100 people pages a day and I'm really struggling to put it down at the end of that which is also a really really good sign so I'm really excited to get the painting done because I'm going to be listening to Path of Daggers while I do that today and then I can get back into this but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and get dressed and then I'm going to show you what my plan for the bedroom today is. It is like 10 30 now I have been procrastinating I came back from my run at quarter past eight did 30 minutes of yoga I then had breakfast those oat bars are really good they almost taste like solid porridge because they don't have the sweetness of like flapjack but I really liked them then I had coffee and read a chapter and then kind of I love gym gear okay y'all know I love my lululemon I love my peloton apparel and because I've done exactly two runs in my life I've been looking at running gear because I feel like I need a top do you know one of those like thin um like long sleeve tops or like a, a zip up jacket that wicks sweat I feel like I need one of those I'm not buying one right now because money's kind of tight because I'm spending everything like buying stuff for the bedroom but I did that to also procrastinate <laughs> on the paint and I looked at Lululemon at like running tops but I am hoping to get a couple of things done up there today like two or three stages but we'll see because like I have procrastinated I've lost like an hour or so so we'll see what I managed to fit in because I'm aiming on wrapping up I think at about 4 p.m if possible. So let's show you where we're up to. This is the window box that I keep talking about that we eventually it needs replacing mainly because of the top of it is like kind of bowing but that could actually be the integrity of the bay because that happens in all houses but we have these panels here they've all been sanded so they have a key in them and all of this I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to paint the center of it because it does lift up it's a storage space in there but my first port of call is going to be to get a primer on this I'm using like a basic MDF primer I think this is actually emulsion it's just these bits that have been glossed but I'm assuming because they're all the same colour 
that they were glossed white and they've faded with age. And then after that, I'm gonna get the second coat on the gloss. So you can't really see, cause obviously we're backlit, but I do actually really like how the gloss turned out on here. We do have some areas that need touching up, like focus here. This is where the tape <laughs> pulled the pin off. We also have like this was me. I had gloss on my arm and I didn't realize and I lent on the wall. This is where I tried to touch up the black pin after glossing. So I need to, well, I need to do a second coat anyway, but I need to make sure that I get all the way up to the edge on these bits that I've messed up. Speaking of that, my solution to attempt to not use tape is this. So this is a plastic cover of a notebook. I am gonna try, I'm only gonna do this where it needs to be done because I don't feel like it's a perfect method. But I'm gonna try and like hold it like this, paint up against it and then bring it off, wipe it down and then move it along again to try and get out of having to tape. My main worry with this is that it's gonna drag paint like gloss as I'm moving it across the wall, which is why I feel like wiping might be necessary in terms of the rest of the touch-ups that we need. This is how big the section that the tape ripped off was. This, I've managed to, like you can see brush marks in it, it's not perfect, but it's against the skirting. So not many people are gonna see it, but this is a bit that I haven't touched up properly. So I essentially just need to, it's a crack in the paint where the tape has lifted it, but I'm gonna like, paint it back down and it'll stick. I mean, it's stuck everywhere else on the wall and that's fine. And then over here, we have a few bits. So essentially I'll pretty much do with just a brush stroke down this wall. I do realize that I'm being kind of perfection -y about it. And the irony of it is, is that if you actually look closely at the paintwork that I did downstairs in 2019, it ain't perfect. There's gray paint on the coven in my office. It's not a perfect job, but I think it's an anxiety thing for me as well. Like I never used to be this finicky about everything having to be right. I was more of a like, let's roll with it. It'll do kind of attitude. And I think especially with this room, because we paid so much for the plaster and for everything to be new, I want it to look like it's new. Like I don't want to pay 2000 pounds, which I think it was like 1800 for the room be plastered. I don't want to pay for that and then do like a shoddy painting job. So um, I know that the paint isn't going to be perfect because honestly, I, like I said last week, I'm glad that we used Faro and Ball in this room because this room, we don't really touch the walls. I am very nervous about like carpet fitters coming in. I'm nervous about my dad coming, putting the radiator back on, which also needs painting and all of that kind of stuff, getting the furniture in. After that, we shouldn't really be touching the walls, so it should be fine. But any other room in the house, like Faro and Ball would not swing. And actually it's so finicky going on. Like I've had to touch it up so many times. I think I would use like, is it Little Green? Is a really like premium paint brand that has like a better reputation than Faro and Ball. The reputation for Faro and Ball is great actually. It's just the durability, like the color, as you can see, the finish is stunning. But as somebody who's clumsy, as somebody who is almost a perfectionist and gets really anxious when things don't go right, which is an anxiety problem that I need to fix, but also I just don't think it's a pain that's good for my mental health, if we're being honest. I am obsessed with it though. And the gloss I think is really good. I am really happy with how the gloss has come out. It's just, or maybe I could try Modern Emulsion next time, which has like a 7% sheen instead of 2%, but I think it's a little bit more durable. But anyway, this isn't getting anything done. So I need to take the ladder through to our little like DIY cupboard because I've left the MD MDF primer like on the top shelf. And I'm gonna put my audio book on and crack on with priming this. Then hopefully I'll do a second coat on the rest of the gloss. And the idea is that by the time I've done that, the MDF primer on this might be dry enough for me to get a first coat of gloss on it. That means I'll be happy to. Okay, moment of truth pending. I hope y'all have your fingers crossed for me. I know you're seeing this after it's happened, but I feel like your future manifestation is really gonna help me through this. So can I fix the gloss work using this notebook cover instead of having to tape it? Or am I just gonna have to suck it up and try and tape it? Let's see. So if I hold it like this, against the wall. I'm just gonna use a little bit of gloss. Scared. Oh gosh. I don't wanna go all the way to this edge because as you can see, it's not tight up to the wall because my hand isn't there. Mm. 
yeah, no, that did not work. Amazing. Every single thing that I touch, I make worse because this is what the plastic thing I tried to kind of fix this. Um, I made it worse. There's no gloss on the wall. And also I had frog tape on for maybe all of 20 seconds and it's taken the paint off the wall. So I don't know what to do right now. These three are the options I think in which I say the lightest one. Yeah. That's still a beigey gray in it. It's not like a cold gray. I think that actually. Yeah. I have just finished my Patreon sprints for the week and I've just got through in the last like hour of the sprints I got through a bunch of admin but before that I did finish our first book of the week which is Poison Study by Maria B. Snyder. I really enjoyed this one but it's not perfect. I would say that I didn't enjoy it to the degree that I expected to. What I mean by that is like I really enjoyed it. I'm really excited to continue but I wouldn't like push this at people and say oh my god loved this book you need to read it. So I ended up giving it a low four star rating and I think that the writing, I've said this before about books, like it's just not emotive enough to truly have me rooting for the characters and typically in a book that's like a favourite for me or a, a five star read, it has to have like a, a plot that's intriguing, a really complete not necessarily complicated but well thought out world and also characters that I can really get behind and root for and it was the characters that fell flat in this one for me I did like them and I did really enjoy the story but I guess an example of of what I mean is that I there's a romance in here there is a romantic subplot it's definitely not the dominant part of the story but it is 100% there and whenever the characters kiss you don't have like uh there were butterflies in my stomach as his lips move towards mine it's more like we kissed passionately and then the like story moves on like it goes after we caught our breaths we rejoined the conversation in the boardroom and stuff like that so i think that they're kind of glossing over that bit it's like all of the intimate scenes in here are not graphic at all they're almost like skirted right over to the point where for one of them i kind of had to actually for all of them i had to read it more than once to realize that was what was going on because it's like a, a small paragraph and then it kind of gets back to the plot which i mean is fine it's just i would have liked more in the writing to kind of pull me in and be more interested and excited in the around the romantic relationship as opposed to kind of just unbothered by it i guess there is a really big content warning in here as well for sexual assault i would also say that it is a pretty graphic depiction so do be aware of that if you're going into this i'm i know that a lot of people say that with every book they kind of enjoy this series less but i'm really excited to see where magic study goes and based on the synopsis which i pulled this book out immediately after finishing this one to kind of see what was in store for book two and what this says in the synopsis i'm really intrigued about and I feel like it also has a magic school setting which is also great so I'm really excited to get to this one next month and I'm so glad that I finally read this and at this point I don't regret buying the fairy loot editions even without knowing that I like this series. I say that I have a good track record with that like I only buy series I haven't read when I have a feeling I'm gonna love them. So far I'm, I'm still fine with it but I do feel like the writing style is a little bit more it, it's almost like a diary in that it is not quite emotionless but like a factual almost account of what happened. So it'd be like I spent the afternoon training with these people and then I went to meet up with Valak who gave me this assignment to protect the commander and on the way to that I stopped at the kitchens to get some food and it's less about like the flutters that she gets in her stomach when her love interest is near her. So this one is done which means that I am currently my current main read is now Shadowlands which as you can tell I'm thrilled about. I really need to update the spoiler vlog for that as well. I actually need it's 9 30 and I need to go work out. I normally work out much earlier than this but I spent all of my day running errands so I had my nail appointment I have my brows done I feel like a new woman again and then I was <laughs> my battery was flat on my car and I know that my car broke down a few weeks ago like a month ago I just want to say this was not my fault Curtis borrowed my car left the lights on and my battery ran flat so it wasn't my fault it wasn't my car's fault that this happened but I was supposed to go pick up a prescription but by the time I went past the doctors it was closed for lunch it's really annoying that they do that but I go to like quite a small surgery so they 
do tend to work for like three hours in the morning then three in the evening and I went to my dad's to pick up some stuff so that I can replace the sockets and the light switch in the bedroom this weekend which I'm actually really excited to do that I feel like I'm gonna feel real accomplished when I rewire those and then we actually went and bought our carpet so I wanted to go in and just find out what fitting costs were because to be honest I have never bought a carpet in my life I don't know how much they cost or I didn't I didn't know how much it cost to fit how much underlay was and we essentially went in and asked and she showed us this carpet she was like for a reasonable price point this is like our most popular carpet with underlay super thick and I agreed so we brought them back we picked our colours and then we just went straight in and, and paid for it which is great. It is going to take six weeks to be fitted. She said if there's any cancellations she'll let us know and can potentially bring the fitting forwards but now that I know when it's booked in we actually have a deadline of having the bedroom finished like the carpet being the main issue which is um the beginning of May and we've actually booked the carpet in for the third so we're right on the wire but that gives me time because I still need to paint the radiator and I haven't sorted out any of the paint for that or anything yet. It's just something that needs doing. I also need to get a light fit in and it means that instead of dipping into like my savings to buy those things now I can wait until I get paid at the beginning of next month and do it then I just even though the money will go back into my savings I'd just rather not take it out because it's less likely to go back in if it comes out or if it stays it stays in there you know so um as I was saying, because I went off on a tangent, currently reading Shadowlands, I do think that I am going to pick up something to read alongside that because I don't think I can just read that. But I know that I want my book finished by the end of this week, if at all possible. So I think I'm going to give myself a goal to get to like page, am I on like page 300? So if I make a goal that I can't start a new book until I get to page 400, that should hopefully get me through a chunk of that before I like give in to the urge to pick up a new book. But it's Mandy Moore, yes! I love go for it, chest press. Elbows daily forward. Press those weights up, good. I want those shoulder weights back and down. So I think I've solved the problem of how to patch up the wall. This is pretty much the worst of it. It's just this wall that's really wobbly. But if you look like here, I don't know if it's picking it up on camera, but you can really see where I've patched up that wall after the tape ripped the paint off. But my solution, providing it works, we'll see together. I did test it the other day on a different part of the wall, but if I put this onto the skirting instead of the wall, and then with my tiny paintbrush, which needs softening, paint along this line, I have to patch this up with gloss again. I'm going to be mad because I have the window box to gloss today. But I'm done with the skirting at this point. Right, moment of truth. Um, no, wow, it's even lifting the gloss up a little bit. Although not to the same extent. How can gloss be this weak? Our neutral is the green one. No, he said green will be the earth wire. So that's earth, live, neutral, sick. I know that screwing them into the wall would be the hardest part. Good afternoon guys, Weekend Mode has finally been activated. I do still have to go put a second coat on the gloss tomorrow, but I think that's actually it because all that's left to do in there now is fit a, the new light fitting when I have one and paint the radiator, none of which I can do because I, I actually haven't researched how to paint a radiator or chosen or ordered paint or anything yet. So I'm gonna get on that in the week so that I can hopefully do that next weekend. I do have plenty of time before the carpet's fitted though. But this evening, I'm planning on getting a lot of reading done. Last time I spoke to you guys I said I wanted to read something else but I couldn't pick anything up or I wasn't going to pick anything up until I reached page 400 in Shadowlands and I still have not done that. I actually read nothing yesterday. I was busy. I was doing other things. It's Fortnite Fridays and I also like was filming and editing all day so I didn't have a whole ton of time to read 
but I also wasn't super motivated to pick this up. So I just, I didn't read a single page yesterday. So I think at this point with it being Saturday afternoon and me wanting to have this done, like I don't want to carry this to next week. Cause I have two and a half books that I definitely want to get done next week. And then we'll see how I do with this, which I am currently 277 pages in. So I'm like just before the halfway point and that's fine. Like nothing amazing is happening. I'm just listening and feeling nothing essentially with wheel of time this one i'm very excited for it to be over and i actually have a lot of time this evening because curtis is playing cards with a friend so i'm gonna be by myself and it is also peace talks weekend for ramathon which means that like for every book you finish or read during peace talks you gain extra points so i do like i knew i wasn't going to be able to fully commit to peace talks because I was, I had stuff to do upstairs. But now that I've done that for the day, I want to crack on and get some reading done. And then maybe if I do finish this early, if I do finish this before like the end of tomorrow and I pick up a new book, it should be a book that I want to read next week. Because I'm obviously not going to finish another book before the end of tomorrow. Because I don't think I have anything especially short I want to read right now. But maybe I'll pick up something else. We'll see what happens. But I'm going to go make some dinner. I think we're going to start. We finished what we do in the shadows. We're up to date now. So so we're waiting for the new season, which I think is going to drop this summer. So I think we're going to be starting the Nickelodeon documentary today, which Curtis is more invested in than me. I was never a Nickelodeon kid. I don't think I really watched anything on Nickelodeon. I was more interested in Disney Channel, but then we also didn't have cable. So I didn't really, I had nothing that I could watch. I think my overall thoughts of Nickelodeon as a child is that everything felt like it appealed to adults. And I didn't think that the humor was funny. Like SpongeBob didn't get it. I get it more now as an adult than I ever did as a kid. And then things like Drake and Josh, and I just didn't, I, I thought that they weren't funny. Yeah, we're gonna see what the tea is. I know that the producer guy that the documentary is about has also released like an apology or like an explanation video or something, which I think we're also gonna watch. But after that, I will maybe go with Curtis to Walkbury or maybe I'll just settle down and get stuck into my book. It's not the most compelling read. So maybe get through my book would be more a more accurate statement. <laughs> Last night I very much should have come in and filled you in on my progress with my book but after we had dinner we finished the Nickelodeon documentary which was super interesting and then we watched the last episode of the Beckham documentary which we started like way when it came out and then never finished it which was also super interesting especially for me and Curtis watching it together because I'm super invested in like the celebrity Spice Girls relationship element and family element of it while he's in to the football as like a Manchester United fan. So um, I did not come and let you guys know that I did finish Shadowlands by Stacey Marie Brown. And boy, was this a drag. I did not want to finish this. I did sprints in the afternoon with Mel from Mel and Ori to Realmathon. And I was reading a chapter and then going through the submissions for my next book club, like Patreon book club series, just to break it up so that I did not have to read this. I, we all know this, you will probably have noticed that when I lose interest in a series or a book, I truly do lose interest to the point where I'm like barely paying attention. Like, I don't know how you all hate reading because I simply cannot, but it was fine. I ended up giving it two stars. If I was still feeling the same way about this series in general as I was when I started it, it probably would have got a three. The quality of this one wasn't terrible in comparison to like books one through four. We know I didn't love five. But at this point, I'm just so over the series that it simply can't be higher than a two star for me because I pretty much didn't want to read this at any point throughout it. I didn't love that it was multi-perspective. I didn't think it was necessary. And also it's slightly annoying that this pretty much wraps up Brexley's story arc 
arc but some of the other perspectives that are side characters throughout this entire series are left a little bit more open-ended and like I said when I started this it says here the end of one story is merely the beginning of another which makes me believe that Stacey Marie Brown intends to publish like spin-offs in this series. For me personally I will not be continuing. I already think that this series is too long. Instead of some of the filler we had in this one and the repetitiveness we maybe could have followed and resolved some of these side character arcs so that they don't need further books. But I am very very glad that this is over and I applaud myself honestly for managing to get to the end of this. If this was not the last book in a series I would have DNF'd it and if this was not my Patreon book club pick I think it would have been one of my those series where I say I'm going to continue at around like book three or four and then just never <laughs> quite make it to the end. So I'm glad that this is done which brings us to the end of this week's vlog. Next week I'm pretty much just going to be trying to get to the end of my March TBR because I've actually already filmed my April one and in that video I said that I have already read everything on my March TBR and I haven't. I have like two and a half books to go. So I'm going to be trying to get to that including reading one of my most anticipated releases of the year. So if you are at all interested in that please do stay tuned. I do hope that you guys have enjoyed this vlog if you've made it this far. If you have please don't forget to like if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna and I'll see you guys next week. Bye! Oh you bite your friend like chocolate You say you will go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no we're never gonna quit it, no